ഹലോ മിസ് ഒന്നും കേൾക്കാനില്ല ഹലോ 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 ഹലോക്കെ <laughs> 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 today we are here for the fourth and the final session of our webinar series how to spark your audience 0104 and today's session deals with the topic speak with points this webinar series was inaugurated by our beloved principal dr sister jis mathares on 17th july 2020 so let me take this opportunity to welcome mr davis padikel professor jodi engineering college jabalpur towards this session sir has signed us in the last three sessions and we are all eagerly waiting for the next i take this opportunity to welcome the faculty members and the students to this session once again i welcome you all sir how you can start the class <laughs> sir hello hello okay you can start the class can i yes ma'am okay just a moment uh, i just yet so i think there will be some little bit of problem so let me try yeah i mean i'm not able to see my face yeah i see my face now okay okay yeah, just a moment okay it's surely in the corner anyway that's fine i'll wait for uh, bush to come and um, so please in case you see bush ask him to come over for a minute until i start with my uh, powerpoint slides okay hello miss miss keto uh, yes keto keto hello uh, keto as okay. ember um, i will ask him yeah, to ask come. Uh, bush to come over yeah okay thank you uh, yeah, okay. all right so uh, okay so uh, students um, glad to be here uh, today is my penultimate day of my four uh, you know series uh, of the se- uh, the fourth part of my series and um, in fact i'm going to miss you all it was a delight to come here and then take classes although it's my first time and i enjoyed every bit um i mean there are about 55 students of so our so it could be two reasons one the weather is too nice to sleep or my presentation is not good you're not getting anything out of my presentation so i don't know which to pick you tell me so anyway let's start um as i promised we, we are starting at uh, 204 i'll be leaving you by 304 so stay awake in case you are lying down it's fine but you know pay attention to what i'm telling it's of course my last part there's not a long video like um, the last week but uh, i promise to tell you some very very important things uh to show people who are listening to you as to how to speak with voice now what is the meaning of poise most of you will be familiar with the word but speaking with poise is um i would sum it up being calm and confident all right being calm and confident when you speak so what are the things that is essentially essential to speak with a poise like being calm and confident the person who is not confident is called diffident all right so do not try to be diffident because if you know what you're going to speak if you have that body language to speak then there is nothing to worry about okay so let me quickly revise what we went through in this last three sessions very quickly before i start with this so meanwhile i'll get some more uh, participants in so right now we have about 53 54 i guess so let me connect with my powerpoint i'm not pretty sure about that but let me see so i wish uh, push is here so that i could get that thing spread out anyway let me give it a shot are you able to see the uh, just a moment
Are you able to see the PowerPoint slide? Uh, yes, but you have to uh, put it in slideshow mode. Slideshow. Put it in the slideshow mode. I need to enlarge. Uh, it's still in the. Uh, but you are able to. Yeah, Bush is here. Bush is here this moment. Yeah. So, um, are you able to see this uh, one that says about me? Do you have that? No. No, okay. I, I, uh, Bush I, is here, just now. You got I, it, right? Okay, I'm sorry. You have to put in the slideshow more. Yeah. Okay. How is it now? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's right. It's about It's okay me. now, yeah? No, oh, it's gone. It's about me. It's gone, just a moment. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so let's start quick. Yeah, we all um, able to see. So this was pretty much uh, my four uh, stages, right? Setting the stage, five rules of conversation, how to be a good storyteller, and speak with voice. Okay. Now. As I said, these are the four most important things to speak a good English, an effective English, an English which is presentable, which is your accent. Yes, it's good. I mean, your accent has to be good. That's the first thing that you, to, you need to fine tune if you need to impress people. Second, of course, is grammar. As I said the other day, someone asked me a question, is grammar really important? I said, yes, it's important, but it will work on its own because I have Numerous students in my college, uh, in my Jyoti Engineering College, whose grammar is not good, but by the time they came to fourth year, with constant practice, they got better. So I would not suggest you to go to the basic uh, grammar and then start one by one. That's going to take time. But if you practice, you can eventually improve. Intonation. What is intonation? As I don't, in one monotone, I don't speak. I pitch up, down. You know, it goes up, down. This is the way how I speak. Next, of course, vocabulary. Vocabulary comes with a lot of practice. As I said in my last class, I said, you know, have a little uh, uh, a book, right? A flashcards, what they call a small book, wherein write three or four or five words every day, write the meaning, make some sentence in your own mind. You don't have to write it in case you are lazy. You don't have to write it, but at least, you know, rehearse it in your mind. For example, as I said, a word called naive. I hope you remember the meaning. Naive means very shy and innocent okay so um he pretended to be very naive but in fact he is not or she pretended to be very naive in fact she is not something like that in your mind you don't have to repeat so vocabulary always counts you know uh, um, you, you're seeing great speakers use excellent vocabulary meaning they are not normal. They go one step above than the others and come up with good vocabulary, plus all their other things in place, and they look fantastic. All right, so let's move on. These are the mispronounced words which I uh, compiled for you all. All these words are important. Now, I'm not going to go through that again, but as I said, they are very, very important. These are the words which my students used to make mistakes, and then I compiled it. And, uh, you know, there you go. So I hope maybe at the end of the session, I'm going to have a question uh, time wherein if you have any doubts, any, any particular word that's mentioned, I'm going to clarify it for you. All right. So uh, I had two uh, uh, slides of those. And um, okay, these are, the, you know, as I said, there are certain words, like, for example, the first one, as I said, apt, and as I put that apt, like, you are the right person for the job. You are the apt person for the job. I really enjoyed the food. I appreciated your hospitality and the food that you provided. Okay? I enjoyed. Avoid the word liked. Okay? Next. Sorry. I'm not, I mean, uh, I'm sorry for what I did. Okay? My sincere apologies, okay, for the error that I have committed. I will ensure that I will not repeat it in future. Something like that. So these are the words which I said can be substituted with certain very cliched words that you use. What is cliched? Often repeated words, you know, like this thanks and uh, right and like and, uh, you know, sorry and all this. So change. And these are the set of uh, words that I said, which 
you should use in order to synonym the cliched words that you normally use and you look different you present different people look at you wow that's nice okay let's move on these are the positive power words always try and use positive words okay i give a I give a good compilation of uh, words that you can use as positive words you know avoid those negative words well negative words when you have to use you have to use that's fine but get to the habit get into the habit of using positive power words it helps a lot during interviews okay all right so well, this was my homework uh, by the way coming to homework i had only like about 10 entries last time and i need to mention about one particular girl i'm not going to mention the name now you know i was in complete awe by the way how she wrote a story it was superb it was an incident that happened to her she said and it was super followed by a wonderful poem that poem was very very good you know i was wondering if uh, students here can write this well if you can write this well you don't need me seriously and that was a wonderful uh, entry by one of the uh, student and i want to sincerely um, appreciate what you had written and therefore taking the time to write and you know let it be a starting point for the others you know it's not that the others were not good but this was exemplary so you know try in and send in more work to me give me some work keep me busy all right and uh, you know i'll definitely check and send it back send back to you like i did to that uh, other to, like i did to all the 10 of you right so please make sure you keep once this class is over i'm not done and dusted and gone you can always keep in touch with me all right next one five rules of a good conversation start with small talks you know like how are you how is the weather you know i like the sari that you're wearing small small talks winning is not important don't don't think you, you want to win all the time in a conversation when you when you win you make enemies so what's important is to strike a good conversation keep the audience guessing what's coming next you don't know you know keep the audience guessing so that they want to hear more of you all right i gave you a list of what you should uh, not use as to keep the audience guessing as i said use humor whenever you can not black humor not everyone will appreciate black humor all right black humor is things that you should not tell right use emotional pitch and intonation always make your conversation interesting and end with a positive message okay never talk about religion what is too much information don't share too much of you to the other person that is tmi too much information talk to one person in a group conversation avoid that criticize anybody gossips avoid that interrupt contradict yes sometimes you need to interrupt is very true you need to interrupt sometime somebody but what do you have to do um i'm, I'm sorry uh, excuse me i need to add in something here or excuse me mary may i interrupt you for a moment um it could be uh wow i, I mean i really uh, uh i mean um, accept what you're telling but here and i wanted to add something you know to find some ways to interrupt the conversation rather than you know when the person is talking don't chat inside and then express your view which is uh, rude okay. next show disinterest with body today we'll be doing a lot of body language i'll tell you how what you have to do when you're speaking okay so watch what you talk I hope everyone can hear me, I guess. Anytime, if the audio is cut off, please let me know. I don't want to end up like a mad no. person talking to myself. Yeah, thank you. No, it's audible, it's audible. Thank you, perfect, yeah, thank you. So, and then followed by how to be a good storyteller, okay? Storytelling is very, very important because that's what keeps, oops, just a moment. And I would, you would enjoy seeing the ship again, but once is enough. Okay. Okay. So how to be a good storyteller? One, hold their interest. Okay. Gauge the audience. You know, what kind of audience? For example, speaking about the audience. Now, I'm live. So I need to watch my words, what I am speaking, because anybody could listen to this on the other hand if i'm in a classroom i can involve in more jokes and uh, kind of black humor sometimes in order to keep the students engaging engaged but you know it all depends you got to see the age of the listeners now for example if they are 24 25 or 21 uh, 20 21 like you how many of you are 
in that case i had to as i said the other day i had to go down to that level and then get that interest because you can't be boring talking about you know philosophy of socrates or plato so gaze our audience you need to see who you're speaking to you can't speak to uh you know use black humor or some kind of low they're not going to enjoy that when you're speaking to a very intellectual crowd you need to know what you're going to speak to so keep be very careful when you speak to people i mean based on the age based on the likes dislikes their culture you know this is when you need to mold your conversation okay and again what's in it for me if, if in a conversation it's all about me 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 remember that okay which i'll explain to you you know as in the following slides as to how you have to be uh, interested and if i will come to that later okay so build a connection you need to know what is speaking to uh, tell some stories always with a little bit of humor you know show the struggle that you went through and no never brag yourself that you achieved something big when that person who is listener did not achieve anything and that's very rude too okay provide a satisfying conclusion and do's and don'ts if you can just read through quick now you coming to the the last part how to speak with voice okay now can you see my hands i'm not able to see me uh, bush uh, yes bush are you able to see my hands now yes 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 okay so let me start now okay the first is practice manners and etiquettes what are etiquettes your daily habits okay now the first is choose words wisely okay choose words wisely why because the words that you use can make or break relationships right can build or damage relationships you know you should have seen with your experience your 20 21 years many a time when you put the your foot in your mouth what is it saying foot in your mouth that means it's a saying right put in your mouth you still is telling something wrong something rude to a person that's called putting foot in your mouth like mo most of politicians do and then they cause damage to the party to their party so that's that's what is called putting foot in their mouth so avoid using such words because those can seriously damage the relationships next pa <coughs> excuse me pause why is pause very important when you speak because many a time when you get stuck with your next idea okay i would suggest don't just move on to some other topic and try to be a filler there instead pause for one or two quick seconds and then try to recollect that very quick in case you completely run out your blank in which case you know bring in something else and you fill it up by then you'll remember what you left okay that's importance of pause i'll also tell you regarding the fillers like mm, like uh this uh you know instead pause and then you speak the next word don't use too many of fillers like you know a broad lot of people use like okay i'm not uh, like uh, going to the college today because uh, it's like there are no teachers coming there so uh, and then you know what this you know what all this is not necessary in a conversation okay so these are certain fillers i'll tell you what you have to do in the next slide now don't rush when you speak because you know in a minute normally a good speaker speaks about 150 to 180 words per minute okay now when you speak too fast the thing the message is not across given across okay and when when you when you don't send your message across the point in talking the people talk to 400 3400 they go rapid at and some which you need to
Hello. 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 One fifty to one eight hundred is in there. Hello. Now, there was an interruption. Times four fifty. Tone and hello. body language. Can you hear me? Sir, hello. There was an interruption. Hello? Somebody said something. Yeah, I'm. I'm Sapna. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's not clear. Breaking the up. Sound was, the sound was not audible for some time. Oh, for some time, yeah. Okay. So, uh, how is it now? All right. Now it's okay. Uh, you, I mean, you were not heard from. Don't rush. Again, yeah, your voice is also breaking off. Not able to hear. Just a moment. And now it's audible. She's right here making some changes. So audible now? Yeah, now it's audible. Yes? Yes, yes. I now now I can hear you. Okay. So as I said, um, I hope you all heard the choose words wisely. You know, that's what builds and breaks relationships. Okay, makes and uh, breaks relationships. So use the word wisely because you should not hurt anybody's culture, feelings, whatever. Okay. Next, what I said was about avoid using too many fillers like like, mm, okay, right? That kind of thing. Instead, pause a bit and then you speak. Next, talking about don't rush, speak. As I said, I mean, don't rush when you speak. Is What I meant was, you know, usually a good speaker speaks about 150 to eight, 180 words per minute. Anything more than that is not really good. All right, so there are some people who speak 300 to 350 words per minute, which is not good. Next, speak soft in a soft tone. Okay, speak soft because when you are, you know, I have the habit of speaking loud in the class, but it took a while for students, you know, to understand that I'm not being rude, but that's the way how I speak. Okay, so try to speak soft, and because by and large, the audience like to hear it soft. Next, tone matters. Tone is a very important phenomenon split the communication wheel into three parts. The first part is the words that you use. The second is the tone that the, you speak, the tone that you speak. And the third is the body language. Now, let me um, give a certain percentage, which you know people have done research, and then they found that words matter only 8% tone matters 32 percent and body language constitutes 60 percent so remember tone is second it's not the words that are too important that we use according to the research it's the tone how we speak and the body language that we use okay next we are going to come to certain body language which i hope you can see my uh, hands can you can you all see my hands Yes, sir. Yes, okay, good. Now, the first one is firm handshake. What do I mean by that? I'll go in quickly because, as I said, I promise to leave you by 3.04. All right, 3.04. 100% I'm going to leave you and you enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a good nap. Okay, so firm handshake, when I mean is when you meet someone, of course, now handshake is not possible due to the pandemic restrictions, but firm handshake, when I mean is Most of the people have you seen, they give shake hands like this. This is not the way you shake hands, okay? Or when a man give it to the lady, it will be even too soft. But that's not the way when you, when you give shake hand. I mean, it should be this one locked into this. And this is how you shake your hand. Let me show from here, okay? How would I show? This way. I hope you can see me. This is the way how you give a shake hand, but don't break their hand, their palm, okay? A firm handshake means a firm like this, you are genuinely shaking hands with that person. It's not a casual thing like this. Oh, hello, how are you? This is not a shake hand. This, if you have seen um, corporate people, okay, when they meet their clients, the first thing is, hey, how are you? And then they give a firm handshake, this one locked into this, and give a firm handshake. Hold this tight, but don't squeeze their hands and break their uh, you know, the bones, 
okay be careful you know so that's very important nodding you know we indians have the habit of nodding too much oh yeah yeah i guess yes yes i i do that yeah i really do i don't want to go i don't want to go this is something that should be avoided you know when you nod it's just only a slight nod oh yeah yeah that's right yeah no 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 i'm not too interested in that don't have to shake too much you look like a clown okay so avoid that next enthusiastic greeting hello how are you um what's up everything okay with you something like that a uh, that's those are called plus next coming to eye contact the next slide will show how do you keep an eye contact with the person like you can't straight directly look into their eyes and then you know beam at them and that's not good they're going to feel a kind of awkward so i'll the next slide you will see how eye contact works but when you speak to a person it said 80% keep eye contact 20% look elsewhere that's okay 80% look into where all which you will see in the next slide so basically 80% eye contact and 20% out somewhere because you just can't keep straight to their eyes mouth or nose or face or whatever it is straight for all the time that's terrible okay i know it's not possible you know i always look sometimes outside and then bring to the face then again move and speak to the face of them and then move outside somewhere and then come back this is weird too all right next gossip avoid gossiping about others because tomorrow they'll gossip about you so get the message across to people that i'm not a gossiper okay they said um gossip mongers are nations enemies okay gossip about our government gossip about the other parties gossip about our neighbors gossip about our friends all this must be avoided because remember tomorrow you you uh, could be gossiped about too and that's terrible especially when it comes to girls i don't mean boys also it affects but then girls it affects more you know how okay now names always try to remember the names that you met in oh that's uh, i'm doing fine sir and uh, try to use the names because when you remember the names they know that the person cares about that person you know i told in my not only a class the class before that your name is the most famous name in the world you like that name to be told uh, repeatedly by others it, it should, it's all about you right that's how we humans are so when they use um, names it has a special bonding an effect on the listener okay using cell phones when you are talking to someone should be avoided okay there's uh, people are you know you are you are talking but you are more concerned about the ping on your phone what's the beep on your phone you are more concerned about and you try to look in it what does the the other person think ah this person is not interested in my conversation so i think quickly we should finish off the conversation we should sum it up we should conclude the conversation and then get the hell out of here so you know avoid using phones social media is a thing where okay social media two things i mean basically one thing the mistakes that you do is most of you indulge yourself in conversation which is what you send emojis smileys or you're upset or a sad face or all oh, thrill this one this is all you do try to use some words now please do not feel that you're going to make mistakes everyone makes makes mistakes but it emphasizes more in case he use some words and make the other person feel good because everyone can send this that means you're not taking any time in as soon as you look into the emojis these are the three four things which you used most and then you pick one of them and send oh, what's great about it now if i send a joke in my you know whatsapp group to some of my friends or somebody in college in case they said that's a joke which i've never heard i laughed out loud for the joke that you wrote and it was awesome one of the best jokes of this week that i got wow i feel so good so this is what this kind of you know messaging makes a good effect and it helps you english too right okay one way conversation one way conversation is you know what i'm talking about see it's all about me it's all about me you should avoid that let the other person also speak okay let it be an open ended question what do you think about it that's an open ended question don't don't tell about yourself your family your achievements the marks that you got whatever you have the 
gadgets that you have, the nice saris that you have, the nice chudidars that you have, you know, just be, oh, this color is good, you know, all of that. Let them speak too. Okay, change subject. Now, change subject is how do you enjoy when someone talks about uh, somebody who died in your family or maybe about your divorce, for example? How do you feel? So, if someone mentions, you know, maybe it's out of um, a camaraderie, which means a kind of friendship, okay? A friendship that they said makes you feel good that you care and that's the reason you ask. Okay, it could be. But then, if the other person, if you sense that the other person doesn't like, okay, immediately what you have to do, try to change the topic to something else. Oh, that's a nice suit that you're wearing. You know, that dupatta is beautiful. You know, where did you buy that from? Something like that. You should tell the other person that you do not like talking about someone who died in the family or, you know, your divorce or whatever it is, or maybe your sister's proposal. What happened? You know, uh, that didn't go well, right? You know, that boy didn't like your sister, whatever. Okay. Next. Followed that is with the rude statements. These are also rude statements, but again, you know, just imagine this funny rude statement when you got divorced, you're meeting this lady, I mean, this uh, girl after some time, lady, woman, after some time, and you're asking him, what happened? You divorced that guy. You know, I know that guy for, I met him like four or five times. He's the sweetest person in this world. I mean, they're already divorced. Why the heck should you have to talk about, you know, that good man, what a wonderful man. Did he live with him? No. How do you know? So, avoid such kind of rude statements. Rude statements can be me again, abusing someone, using bad words, right? Those kind of slang words, which should be avoided, using abusive terms, which are creepy. You know, avoid using such bad words because that's going to affect them, right? Next, use of idioms. What does the use of idioms mean? Idioms are not phrases. Phrases are some morals. Idioms are, for example, what? Uh, blessing in disguise. Could you came at the right time? It was a blessing in disguise and let's finish off the work very fast. Or beat around the bush, which is what? Beat around the bush means? Like, okay, let's not beat around the bush. Come to the point, please. So when you use idioms, that's, you know, a nice way of expressing to the other person that you can speak well, you're well in grip with the language and they like to listen to you. These are the way how, I mean, foreigners, I was in the US for many, many years. They are so fond of using idioms, but then, you know, it took a while for me to get used to those kind of idioms. Okay, so, you know, uh, try to learn some idioms. I mean, how do you learn? Go to Google, which are the most commonly used idioms? Okay, learn some of them. You will need to know. Okay, learn those idioms and then, you know, try to use them here and there. Okay, next, interruption. I already told you when you have to interrupt someone, tell them, excuse me, I like to interrupt here and you know, I want to ask you something. It helps, always helps during interviews, group discussions. You know, when there will be someone who knows a lot about, maybe the topic is about the Indian economy. Maybe this guy is an economic student and he knows a lot about economics or maybe economics is his weakness. He, he reads a lot, but then when he starts talking about GDP and what that ratio, this ratio, debt ratio, uh, debt trap and all this, you know, what do you have to say? I do completely understand what you say, but I want to add something here and then try to interrupt that person. But before you interrupt, use some pleasantries like, excuse me, whatever. Kids and ladies, when you're talking to a family, always give importance to the kids first. You know, the little kids, make him play with him, don't touch him or her. You know, just play around, hey, whatever it is, and sort of, and then move on to the ladies and then to the men. Abroad, that's very, very important. Here, it doesn't matter whoever you see that person. Oh, because they might think that, why are you looking at my wife? Okay, why do you touch my kid? Why do you play with my kid? That kind of thing. Yeah, I do, but then use this. It might help. Okay, you don't have to look at ladies for too long. You just say hello and so and so, and then you speak to the man, this kind of thing. Okay, listening. Listen more than you speak. Okay, it's a very good trait that you need to follow. Next, going to eating. When you're eating, Okay, well, it's again not part of uh, whatever your conversation, but again, I'll tell you why it's important. Many of us eat without mouth open, Tom, 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 we eat, yeah? See, the food on the plate is all yours. No one is going to grab it from you. It's all yours. Take your time to eat it, okay? Again, when you're eating, don't talk because, you know, this food particles spurt out. So avoid 
speaking while you're eating. Okay, let that thing go. I don't mean when you're eating, you don't have to talk. But let that whatever chunk you have in your mouth go down and then you speak. And then you start eating again. You can talk after, but we don't mix both eat and talk at the same time. Okay, panel interview. In a panel interview, you know, you're sitting there. There are experts from four or five different fields. There are four, for example, four people are sitting there. Now, for example, one lady and three men ask the question. Okay, so if the lady asks that question, look into that lady first when you're answering and then sway your face, uh, sway your look to all the others, come back here. Then go to all the three, come back here to the lady. Now, what if one man asks, look to the man first, look to the others. Don't look at the man alone and speak, meaning you're insulting the others. Okay, I've done so many interviews. I felt so insulted when the person who was next to me asked a question and then the candidate spoke to look at the direction of that person alone spoke and that is very annoying. Okay, so, you know, sway your face to all the side and then come back to the person who asked the question and then finish it all. Okay, that's the way you go. All right. Let's move on. Body posture, very important. <laughs> Stand erect with one foot, one uh, foot, not foot, okay, foot feet apart. When you are standing, you must be wondering how much should we spread our legs or should we keep the legs too close? No. Put one foot uh, apart and then the leg should be like this, not like this, not like this, not like this. It should be like this. Okay. I hope you all can see me. I'm not able to see me because I just see the slide in front of me. So I'm not able to see my face. You're able to see. I hope you can see my, uh, uh, my hands, right? My hand movements. Miss, yes. you can see me, right? I can't hear you. I can, can you hear me? I, uh, yes. You're able to see my hands? Yes. Because I'm not able to see my side. I see only the power, the slide in front of me. So sorry about that. All right. So stand erect with one foot. Now, shifting one side to the other side, shifting your weight to one front is a no no. All right. Try to stand straight when you talk, and that gives uh, you know your square shoulders, you know your eyes, which I'm going to come later. Where do you look? So this is the way you speak. Use your hands again. I hope you all can see me. Move only within one foot from this side. Don't you know you have the Italians have a way to open up their hands fully, and then you know they sway their hands. This is the way Italians talk. So you know I've been to few countries in this world. Italians, a lot of Italians used to work in my ship. So all the captains, officers were all Italians. It's an Italian ship. My ships were made in Italy. So we had a lot of Italians. When you sit next to them, they're going to smash our face. That's the way they talk. But that's how they are. You know, so it's not the right procedure, but for them it's right. I would suggest use within this one foot. This is the way you move your hands. Don't stretch too much. Unless other you want to put, oh, that's the direction. You can't show this is the direction. You show that's the direction. That's fine. But then don't sway your hands too much. Okay. And keep erect and don't shift your weight from one leg to the other. You know, one foot apart. And then this is the way you talk. Move your hands and then come back. Now to the hands, I'll come back later. Chin and head up. Okay. Don't uh, uh, bend low your uh, head, the chin and head again up shows arrogance. When you put your head down, it shows that you are timid, you are subservient. That means you are condescending. That means you are bowing down to the others. You don't have to. All right? Straight up. This is the way you talk. Again, when you look up, it shows that you're very arrogant. You're a very angry, what do you call arrogant? Very you know, proud person. You know, you will not put your chin down, that kind of thing. So sit confident. When you sit, I'll tell you a couple of important things. When you sit, sit confident in the sense, don't push your butt inside. It should be right sitting on the, no, I'm not moving from my position because once I move, I know the camera setup is going to go. So, you know, I'll explain. When, you, when you're sitting, you know, straight up your butt, but I mean ass, to the back of the chair and you sit, how will you keep your legs? Don't cross your legs like this. Don't cross your legs like this. Keep it straight, one foot apart again, or three quarter foot apart again. But again, now you might ask me, some of you might ask me, what if I cross my legs like this, one leg on top of the other? To me, there are, I've done so many interviews for air hostesses, I don't mind them putting their legs across, but here is normally taught that 
you are trying to be very aggressive. Okay, so avoid that. I mean, it depends on you. In case you're very confident about yourself, your language, your subject, what should you worry about? You know, you can cross your legs and say nothing wrong, but again, don't, you know, stretch yourself back or relax just because you're very good in what you're going to do. You don't do that. Okay, you can sit like this, but push yourself to the back of the chair and then plant yourself confidently. That is okay. But don't cross your legs down. I mean, don't cross your legs like this. Okay. Now, don't slouch his word, bending down. You know what happens? Many interviews uh, which I've done, initially they start out very well because they try to remember the, uh, the basic etiquettes, what they need to follow when they're sitting. But as soon as the interviewer asks that person a difficult question, this person starts pushing down. It is so funny to watch that because, you know, when I take classes, I do this interview classes. Uh, when I take for my students, when I make a couple of them sit, maybe the best student, I will try to, uh, you know, role model. And then a person that, even a person like that, after a while, when I ask a couple of difficult questions, they start moving down. You know, it happens, but work on it. Don't move, just sit like that. Whatever you can answer. If you don't have an answer, tell them, oh, I'm really sorry, I did not have the answer for it. You know, can you please ask me the next question? That's okay. Now, gesturing with your palms facing up, never talk. To a person like this, pointing this the way, this the way, this is the way you know. I hope you all can see me. This is the way you show your palm. You know, can you please sit there? This is the way you have to follow. Okay, not like this, not like this. Okay. Next, eye contact. As I told in the previous slide, when during eye contact, this is the best way. What I would suggest It's not from any book, but this is what I would suggest. Eyes two seconds, nose two seconds, mouth two seconds, face. Two seconds, eyes, two seconds, nose, mouth. I don't mean this, 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 this. I don't mean that, but you know, the way you move, they know it's a smooth rotation. What I mean, now, for example, when I'm talking, I said, oh, that's, um, I had a very bad day yesterday in the college. You know what happened? Surprisingly, the principal walked in into my uh, office. When I was not prepared at all, I didn't have my mask on, and suddenly the principal walked in, kind of thing. So I'm smiling, I'm talking, I'm looking at them, face, I'm not looking anywhere else. And then, and then you know what? That, uh, the two minutes is when I removed my mask, and then, you know, kind of thing. Okay, so I'm looking at the face, I'm looking outside. I told you earlier, 80% face, 20% outside. It shouldn't be the other way around. 20% face, 80%. Ah, okay. I mean, you know, that was a bad day yesterday. You know, when principal walked in, I didn't wear my mask. And then he asked me why I didn't wear my mask. And uh, uh, I don't like that principal, you know, not that way. Okay. Next, cut out fillers like, mm, like, you know, I'm not going detail into that. So you think mm, like, sometimes you need to use fillers. I do understand, but do not use too much of like and, mm, and, you know, you know, you know, don't use too many, reduce that. Okay. Among real, real chums, Close friends, it's okay, but then it's formal. Try to avoid, I mean, or lessen, I wouldn't say avoid, try to lessen the usage of fillers. Next, be interested and not interesting. What does it mean? It means listen to the other person. I told you, it's all about me. That doesn't mean you keep on talking about yourself alone. Be interested in the other person's conversation. Just don't be interesting all the time. You know what? I bought a, you know, an Audi car, you know how much it costs? 60 lakhs, you know? Uh, I always like to buy cars and, and I live a lavish life. It's all about me, right? Avoid that, listen to the others. Next, be yourself or your facade will crack. What's a facade? Basically the front part of a building is called a facade, which means if you're not yourself, the entire facade will crack. So for example, if I have someone who who has been maybe for three weeks in Australia, he comes back, he talks to me in English, and he talks, he thinks he talks in a typical Australian accent. You know, Australian accent is quite unique, you know, unlike the English. I know the difference between English or Scottish or Irish or an Australian accent and American accent. Okay. Now, this, this is all I do. I only look into English videos all the time. So if someone talks to me like that, I know quickly this guy trying to show off, meaning, he will crack his facade in front of me. Ah, come on, man. You know, talk like yourself. You know, that's better kind of thing. Don't let others say that. So, you know, be yourself. 
be what you are as long as you follow these rules of uh, conversation hello hello sir hello hello Hello. Can the participants hear me? Yes, miss. Okay. Uh, sorry for the uh, interruption. There is some technical problem. It will be rectified soon. Hello, dear participants. There is some technical problem. Please hold on. We will continue soon. Dear participants, if you have any doubts, uh, you can note it down. You have uh, there will be an interactive session after this, so you can ask him whatever doubts you have. You can ask in Malayalam also. It's okay. Okay, so note down what all things you want to ask him. Okay.
hello hello yeah i can uh, hear you ah yeah right i can hear you just a moment yeah so i mean all the students can hear me now right um powerpoint so i guess you all can hear me but you know what i can hear some of you snoring i left you for 3 minutes and i already can i can hear snoring right i know the weather blame it on the weather so you know i think it's a mistake from our side that doesn't mean i'm going to hold you be beyond 3:04 uh, i'm going to finish by 3:04 um so bear with me i guess you all can hear me I, where did we stop actually let me run through quick miss miss can you hear me hello miss uh, hello uh, hello hello yes where did we stop uh, it's like eye contact you finished eye contact eye contact is been nothing at all no oh okay so no. any two more minutes of uh, uh, i think uh, interest uh, uh, yourself or your facade will crack ah uh, yeah that's up to that i'll start with that then okay so be yourself or your facade will crack which means um facade basically means the front part of a building okay that's it uh, you know as i i mean i was telling earlier uh, maybe you didn't hear i was telling maybe someone went in Austra in to australia for about a week and they come back and try to put on an australian accent just because he knows three or four very oft used words and uh, you know they're trying to push to show off with an accent or trying to know that you got so much knowledge about whatever and when you you know when you speak to someone who is very knowledgeable or who have been to the outside uh, part of uh, india it looks very hello it looks very uh, awkward so that's why i said be yourself or your facade will crack you know have your own accent there's nothing wrong with it have your own way of speaking nothing wrong with it your knowledge that's all you have but show that inclination to learn Okay. The last one, of course, is summon patience. Summon patience. Be cool. Learn not to fake it. But there are some people when they speak, you know, it's for example, my the place where I work, my placement officer. Oh my God, this guy is young. He's only about thirty-four, thirty-five years old. This guy is a good what do you call? Um, what do you call the person who speaks more acting? This this guy is very very good. So when he starts talking, he always gives a kind of a long introduction. then he talks about this by then it's like he you know he wrecks my nerve you know i told several times to him you know try to cut short you when you speak i know you're very funny it's fine but then get the message across and finish off you know but next time i'm not going to listen to you so am i patient no but show patience when someone talks that means like you're respecting the other person okay so learn to fake it until you make it it means pretend to be interested at least look at his face when he's talking maybe sometimes look out look back well, this is what you do all right let's move on so i guess you're okay with all this body posture i showed you how do you stand your chin how you sit how you use your palms hand outside with something that i left hands outside no folding or at the back when you speak to this is very important i'm glad i went through again hands outside means when you're speaking do not put your hands in the pocket there are some people who think that's very stylish to put your hands inside the pocket and talk which is rude when you see abroad people um, you know people who have been in a corporate industry they never put their hands inside and talk don't fold your hands back don't fold your hands at the back okay don't put your hands in the pocket so what do you do basically put your hands on both the your sides when you talk maybe use something like this you can talk this you know try moving your hands when you speak and then bring it back down which is on to both of your sides right and then when you talk like this this is the way you know use your expression move this is all you do this is how you talk all right don't don't fold your hands like this that means you're trying to challenge him or her so don't uh, fold your hands like this which is very rude not good etiquette okay now let's move on oh this is important this i can hear the video can you hear the video no no okay then i'll speak very quickly it's only 5 minutes video i'm not going to go back on my promise which is 3 or 4 that will be better all you have to do is just you know chur back on 
I reduce my volume, so let me speak. So, you know, read quickly. What has been written is one of the finest video that I've taken, which is small, right? So try to read very fast. Where do you keep your hands, your arms? Don't fold your hands. Okay, ladies have a way of keeping one hand on the other. Avoid that. All these examples are closed body language. This is the way. We keep both your hands on the sides when you talk. You can always move a little bit when you talk like this, that's okay. That's open body language. When it comes to your chest, head and chin. That's a slouched posture. That means you don't appear confident. Stand straight when you talk. That shows you're confident. And that you are interested in the other's conversation. So that one looking down, submissive. That means you are bowing down. Arrogant, showing that you are proud and that the other person is lesser than you. extremely unconfident you know, sometimes during interview when the interviewer asks any question you know you know you don't know the answer you put your head down no never tell them that I do not know the answer for it could you please I'm not comfortable in that area could you please ask me another question okay again as I said the 80 20 rule 80 look into the face 20 look outside a smile there's a saying you know um, uh, a smile is worth nothing until it is given away. What is the point in having a lovely smile and you're not able to smile? So a smile is worth nothing until it is given away. Until you smile, it's not valuable. The subtle means a half smile. Don't laugh with a full smile, open all it is that shows sarcastic. Okay, so just a, a not, I wouldn't say half smile, a real smile. A smile from your heart. This is called fidgeting, that you are nervously drumming your uh, table when you're speaking or you're biting your nails so that you're not confident. Okay? Keep your hands straight. Move hands a little bit. But don't strum, they say, S-T-R-U-M. Don't strum the tabletop or when you're speaking. It shows that you're nervous and... They say that's called uh, they say the, I was telling the other one, you know, when you do something, when you shake your legs, when you move, it says there's a thing called obsessive compulsive disorder. Now I'm not a science student, I hope I said it right. Obsessive compulsive disorder. That means you move your hands, you know, so you need to do something all the time. You know, that's not good. Okay. Space, this is what um, 
you know, it says use as much space as possible to show your confidence. It's okay in an interview, don't do that. But otherwise, you know, to portray that you're confident, it's okay, but don't take too much space. You know, in places like India, it sounds very uh, rude and uh, mannerless. So, you know, using so much space, okay, but just show your confidence, okay? So, you know, take it from me, that's fine, yeah, next one. All right, only two more minutes and I'm going to leave you. I hope no one is sleeping at this time. Okay, so very quickly, we are finished. Only two or two or three more minutes and then we are done, right? So remember, every topic you speak must have an head, which is intro, a body, and a tail conclusion. Now, I'm sitting here looking at the fan. Now, someone is going to give a very dull and drab topic. Okay, speak about that. You know, the fans here are only two blades. Speak about that fan. So. You don't say fan very nice during summer. It gives air. This is how most of you speak during interviews. Now, for example, if interview want interviewer wants to know what social skills you have and how good you can speak, simple question they'll ask you. Okay, uh, Mr. John, tell me about the fan that you see right above your head. Tell me something about it. Okay. So, I don't mean every time when you speak with your friends. If they ask you what's about the fan, you straight go to the topic. I don't mean that, but on a formal scenario, when someone asks you to speak, okay, tell me, tell me, tell me about the fan. How do you start? Fan. Um, when it, when during summertime, fans are very important. You know, fan is your best friend. Fans have become bladeless also these days. I heard, but I am used to a traditional three-blade fan. Now. Speaking about the fan about in this, I would say this is one of the most beautiful fan that I've ever seen. With two blades with a nice mark in the middle. I'm sure this fan works very well. It's very appealing, very aesthetic. Okay. So remember, I'm trying to, I'm going to give an introduction. I told about the fan. I, I used two, three good words of vocabulary. And now the interviewer is impressed and I'm not stopping. I shouldn't take more than one minute, one, one, uh, one minute and 15 seconds. Not more than that. Now see how I finish. I've just thought about a topic and I'm see how good I speak because I use the rule, which is intro body and conclusion. Now I used to, I mean, I'm sure this fan, although has two blades and it is a bit on the expensive side, but I'm sure it is going to impress anyone who comes to this room, let alone giving good air and making the person feel very comfortable. So I would always prefer such a fan and uh, glad you asked me about it. You asked me about the fan that we at least, you know, I, I, you know, I had a close look at this fan. And I found how wonderful it is. Something like that. And you finish on a positive message. Okay. Which is my conclusion. Now, remember one thing. When you talk about this fan, where in black humor fits in, you can, if you speak to someone of your friend to create some humor, it's okay, but avoid during formal occasion. Now, suddenly I thought about the fan, how fan is going to be useful for me. Suddenly I thought, and also, sir, in times of misery, when you cannot prolong with your life any longer, all you need is that fan and a piece of rope or a sari to end your miseries. Is that black humor? Yes, because I'm talking about committing suicide in a nice, environment like here, why should I talk about suicide? Which you should not. Now, again, that's the difference that I'm telling you. You can use it, black humor with your friends. They're going to enjoy it. It's going to be fun, but not in a formal occasion like an interview. Talk about the fan. Don't know what do you, what do you, what do you have to say about that? Maybe the interviewer will ask you, okay, it's funny, but what do you have to say about that? And that's bad. So this is how anything what you talk about, you need to have an intro body and conclusion. Now interviews, I'm not going to go much because I did earlier. I'm, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll go beyond your time. Interviews, we will do some other day, if at all I come back. But I did again about the interviews also. How you speak, be calm, composed. If you don't know any answer, tell them you do not know. They love it. Instead of beating around the bush, you're telling something else, they're going to put them off. So don't do that. Kind of audience to speak to. Again, how to improve your English, I already told you. All right, it's my final two minutes. How to improve your English, I already told you. Read small books for starters. Once you can read very well, go into better books. Speak to yourself, think in English. What's up in words and not in emojis. Not the smiley, this, avoid that. What's up in, I mean, visualize an incident. I told the other day, I think I am told about an incident also, a boy, 
uh, leading a blind man across the road and I was explaining, okay, watch comedy serials in English with subtitles. Okay, write five difficult words, talk to best friends in English only, above all, have the willpower. You know, you can go on and on and on and on, listen to on and on in YouTube, coaching, English coaching, motivational coaching, all that, but if you don't work from your side, everything falls flat. So it's you. Okay. I wrote something very nice. Thank you for your participation and listening to me the last four sessions. Honestly, I enjoyed every bit. I wish you the best what life can offer you. Remember, nothing happens in life, whether English or anything, your subjects or anything, course or anything, without the first step. You know, the uh, uh, Lao Tzu, a famous Chinese philosopher, said every long journey starts with a single step so you decide when it is the world is waiting the choice is yours my email address is as i told the other day i hope you can see that dcb at gmail.com you're welcome to send in your articles anytime i told you english is my first wife i will always have time for my first wife okay so send me i'll correct it and i'll send it back to you it doesn't mean once i'm gone from today i'm history no you can send me as many. You can never make me tired with the amount of English articles that you can send me. I would always enjoy. Okay, I'll correct it, send it back to you. So keep pushing yourself, get out of your comfort zone. English is not difficult. English is not difficult. It's because you, you hear people saying English is difficult, but it's not. But let me tell you, if you can speak English well, you can walk tall. I walk tall in my college. I challenge anybody who can beat me in English, who can anybody beat my vocabulary. No one can in my four and a half years there. I walk tall and I consider myself, I am needed in my college. And that's what makes me special there. It's because I can speak a bit of English and I uh, persevere day after day to improve my English. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I'll see you again. Ciao. Bye. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Participants can ask questions now. Hello. I think that I think that was my last oh yeah, question time. If you have any questions, you can ask me about improving English. I told you already what you have to do. But if you have any questions regarding body language, regarding what kind of questions you can ask, what kind of questions you should avoid, please ask me. Sir, uh, there is a question in the chat box. Uh, oh, okay. Just a moment, just a moment. I didn't see it yet. Uh, it's, it's do people use some Russian words while speaking English? Oh, I, just a moment. Okay, I, I see so many else also. Uh, okay, Mr. Pinantan, there's a question. Do uh, people use some Russian words while speaking English? Why not? I use a lot of French words. You know, words like the other day I explained rendezvous, déjà vu. Mm -hmm. Now, both the spellings are different. You know, Wu, both the spellings are different. Now, Russian, of course, there could be, but I know a little bit of Spanish and much more uh, French, also I tend to use. But as far as I know, not many Russian words are used in English these days, what we see here. But yes, a lot of French words are included in those English uh, texts that I see. Russian, yeah, there might be, but it, I guess it's very, very less. Right, I'm sure it's very, very less. So definitely it's uh, more French and Latin. Okay, less of Spanish and very less of Russian. Now, why did you ask that question? Do you, do you speak Russian? You can message me. Do you speak, uh, do you know a little bit of Russian? Krishna, hello. Krishna, no, uh, Krishna, Krishna, yes, you can? No, sir, I don't speak Russian. You can speak. Okay, sir. I mean, do you speak uh, Russian? No, I, don't, you have a... I don't speak. Oh, you don't? So, okay. I thought you had a Russian boyfriend. All right. no, that's, sure. that's, a, that's the best way to learn uh, languages, you know. I have boyfriends from different nationalities who learn all the languages. Wow. You'll be the most wanted person in an interview. Trust me, learn, learning international language, there's nothing to beat it. Learning international language is wonderful. Yeah, it's difficult because you're not in touch with them. But let me tell you, with perseverance, with determination, being steadfast, being consistent, nothing is impossible okay yeah uh, foreign languages are difficult but try a bit of french russian is very difficult 
you know, the text of it is like Chinese. It's very difficult, let me tell you. I, I had a lot of uh, Russian friends when I was in ships. It's very difficult to understand. Okay, French is also a bit understand, but it's more English uh, letters. So it makes it a little more easy. Okay, all right. Any other question? Thank you for asking, Krishna. Any other question? You can, you, you can unmute, message me also. Unmute and ask the question. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. You can even ask in Malayalam also. It's okay. You can ask in Malayalam, that's fine. People say I'm a bit intimidating. I mean, I, they fear when I talk, when they talk to me, my students, you know, but they get used to me, they enjoy. You know, for me, it's all about being smart. Mm. So that's what I can inculcate in my students also. Yeah. Once you're smart, they call call flamboyant, being charismatic, right? So that's important. That's how, you know, you're more powerful speaker when you speak English. Yeah, go ahead. You can speak in Malayalam too. Sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, you told uh, don't smile with teeth, right? Uh, yes, I'll come to that. Don't smile with your, all your teeth. Uh, this is not smile. Uh, this is a beautiful smile which I give. So, okay, I'm not good looking. But second is a kind of a subtle smile, a nice smile, a real smile, a heart smile from the heart. But the other one, mm, this, of course, you're not going to do that. But this kind of thing is like your sarcastic. So that's why don't show all your teeth. Give a subtle smile. The smile that you show, saw in the video is a closed one. That's because they are men. Men usually don't show all their teeth like, you know, you girls have beautiful teeth. So you have every, you're, you're proud to show your teeth, right? So we men, maybe we're not blessed with that beautiful teeth. So, you know, we normally keep like this and I don't have beautiful teeth. So I kind of shut and what this meant by don't show all the teeth and they saw you saw a big cross mark there is because don't smile too much. Because what will the other person feel? That's the thing. Okay? Beautiful question. You know, in fact, I skipped that. I should have uh, explained to you that. But as we are running out of time, I thought, uh, you know, I'll skip that. But anyway, next one. Any question? Participants can ask questions. Please ask some questions. Today is our last session. He will not be available anymore at this platform. She meant that I will. I won't be. I mean, I'll be. I won't be dead. Dead. I don't know. She said I'll be I available don't. here. Not anymore. She said. Okay, that's fine. It's She's with. Only, I don't. My, yeah, that's right. My, that's why my wife is very nice to me. You know. Is there any more questions? Otherwise, we can wind it up. I know you are all waiting for the keyword. That's why. Waiting think. for the keyword, and you want to sleep. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. At least, um, how many students? Sixty-four students. That's wonderful. It was that's 70. wonderful. 70 something, yeah? Okay, a few of them left. Okay, that's yeah. fine. I didn't see the number because all I saw was the PowerPoint and the slides and I don't know what's going on at the back. In fact, it's I couldn't see me also. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I have more uh, students here than uh, students sitting in my class back in the college. So that's great. So... I think no more questions are there. Uh, let us wind up. Okay. No more questions. That's what I have with me and, uh, you know, it's a pleasure being with you all. All right? Excellent. Okay, thank you, sir. So today's uh, keyword is speak. S P E A K. Speak. Okay. Um, and uh, hope you all remember all the other three uh, keywords. You need four of them, and uh, it should you sh you cannot write uh, keyword of uh, day one in day two like that. You have to write as per order. Uh, for 01, 02, 03, and 04, I have given in the uh, Google form. So you have to write it in order uh, without spelling mistake. If there is a mistake, you will not be getting your certificate. So check about the spelling. The, all the words are very simple only. I, I selected such words only. Okay. Okay, let us move on to the thank, thank, thank you section. Thank you, Professor Davis Padikil, for such an excellent session. All these days, you took us into a new world of language, trying to improve our pronunciations through your personal experiences and stories. 
it was indeed motivating. I'm pretty sure that our students would have taken decision to improve their communication skills and started working on it. I, on my behalf of uh, Department of Zoology, Letitia College, Gurivayar, convey the heartfelt thanks to you, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to express my words of gratitude to Dr. Sister Jisma Therese, our dear principal, on granting immediate permission to, con on the, to conduct this webinar series. Thank you, sister. I wholeheartedly thank the faculty of zoology department for the support and the uh, coordination, uh, support and coordination in conducting this webinar series. A special thanks to Mr. Bush and his team for all the technical help rendered in the smooth conduct of this webinar series. Thank you very much. Last but not the least, dear participants, faculty members, and students, you are the stars of this program. Thank you for your support. Hope you will be benefited from this webinar series. Thank you all. So I have posted the feedback link in the YouTube uh, channel uh, as well as in this chat box. So uh, you can uh, fill it as soon as possible and the link will be open till 5 p.m. today. Thank you all. Thank you.